So I recently made a video about building a free energy generator and although it didn't work in the end, I received so much feedback and ideas for improvements that I decided to make a second video, review some of those ideas and show you some of the modifications. But I also want to clarify some of the misconceptions and perhaps make you think a little bit more outside the box. And I want to share some of my personal crazy ideas and opinions about the patent process and how to create sustainable energy on Stylish Sky DIY. If you have not seen my first video about my free energy generator yet, there's a link up here and there's also a link in the description. After reading through all these comments, it's very evident that just like with so many other things today, there's a strong partisan divide on whether free energy is possible. I've learned a lot of thermodynamics too in school, how energy can never be created, only transferred, yada yada yada. But let's look how these machines are actually supposed to work. We have a generator that can produce 4.8 kilowatts at 3600 revolutions and a motor that uses one third of a horsepower that is only 250 watts. That's like a 19th of what the generator can produce when it's running at full speed. So technically we should be able to power 19 of these motors with what the generator can produce. With the worst possible efficiency of only 40%, that still leaves 7 motors. This motor spins a flywheel that is over 90 pounds. If you ever helped someone push start a car, you know that getting the car in motion is the hardest part. Once the car is moving, it's fairly easy to maintain that speed. Same as when you used to swing on the swing set as a child. Hard to get in motion, but then it doesn't take much energy at all. And it's quite difficult to come to a full sudden stop, remember? The idea is that once the flywheel is in motion, that its kinetic energy will keep the generator moving, while the generator produces energy that then again powers the motor. Energy is lost in form of heat due to friction in the bearings, the belts, rubbing against the pulleys, and heat generating in the windings of the motor and the generator. That being said, as you have seen in my first video, my generator does not work in its current setup. But you can also see that the law of thermodynamics does not exactly give us all the answers why it doesn't work. So I have spent a lot of time researching for more efficient motors and permanent magnet generators and I have also read a lot of comments and suggestions and here are a few design changes I'm currently working on. But before I tear that whole generator apart, let me just answer a few questions some people have asked. I have used the so-called keyless bushing to attach the shaft to the weights. The way it works, if you tighten the screws, it will wedge down against the shaft as well as the plate. If you want to go by the book, you're supposed to tighten every screw to a specific torque. Some people also asked about this. I ran my cable just right in my aluminum track. The generator has a protection with two fuses, two 110 outlets and one 220. Quite a few people also told me to rewire my generator, so let's take a look at that. As you can see here, this generator was mass produced and maybe not as efficient as it could be. The bigger the gap between the motor and the stator, the more energy you lose. The problem is that a machine can never squeeze as much copper wiring into the stator or rotor as a hand-winded motor or generator has. If you take a closer look, you can also see the bridge rectifier diodes here. I have taken notes from the comments and I am looking for a low RPM permanent magnet generator. In order to get rid of the belts and switch to a coupling between the motor and the flywheel shaft, I have to first reposition the flywheel. I'm releasing the tension on the belts to get them off the pulleys so that I can take out the flywheel. The pulley on the motor gets replaced with a coupling. I would actually prefer to use a U-joint, but once again it's very difficult without a machine shop to go from a 5 8 shaft to a 25 mm shaft. The 
flywheel actually fits in perfectly with just a couple millimeters space in the front and the back. The hardest part is now to get everything perfectly aligned. I will use the motor plate so that it is adjustable. One of the suggestions was also to use a supercapacitor. Supercapacitors are great to store energy in a short time, much faster than a battery, but I don't think this would help much here, plus they are pretty expensive. A capacitor would however help to reduce the reactive energy caused by inductive loads like motors or transformers. And not to get too technical, but that's why most industrial facilities that typically have a lot of motors use harmonic filters to correct the phase and reduce the load. Please bear with me for a moment as I try to make the connection between phase shifting and my power generator. If you are a musician, you know what I'm talking about. If you try to record something with more than one microphone, the signal can cancel each other out and the playback sounds terrible. This technique is actually used to create karaoke music. The track is simply copied, the phase of one is reversed and by mixing the two together, the singer that is usually in the middle of the stereo spectrum gets cancelled and can no longer be heard. With cars, especially now electric cars, becoming more and more quiet in the engine compartment, this technique is also used to eliminate noise in the cars. If you ever seen a job posting for an acoustic engineer, that is what they do. It's even used at airports to reduce the sound pollution when an airplane takes off. And if you ever wondered how the noise cancelling headphones work, exactly the same way. A tiny microphone records the sound and shifts the phase. So if we can cancel energy like that, as Einstein said, all energy is vibration, then we should also be able to cancel friction in the same way. I have this sander on a rag and as you can see when I pull on the cable friction prevents it from moving. But once it's turned on and vibrating it's very easy to move it. So this shows that vibration can reduce friction. We also know that resonance can magnify even small vibrations enough to damage equipment or even cause catastrophic failure. And we also know that vibrations can cause patterns. So my idea is it to use these kind of vibrations on a molecular or nanoscale level, trying to reduce friction by modulating different frequencies. Up to 20,000 Hz I can use my software oscillator, but after that I need a hardware oscillator that can go up to much higher frequencies. At this point it also requires some crystal quartz oscillators that can go up to several megahertz. Crystal quartzes are probably mostly known from ultrasonic cleaning devices that are used to clean jewelry and such. Artificial intelligence can then be used to optimize the parameters to find the lowest friction and the highest output. I have used machine learning over the last several years to build futures trading strategies and this would work in a very similar fashion. In a nutshell, historical in and out of sample data is used for the system to train itself to run the most efficient. In case of a trading strategy, that means with the lowest losses and with the highest return. Using it with the generator, we want the highest power output and the lowest energy loss due to friction. Input data from the frequency drive and such is used to train the model and we get an optimized output. One of the comments in my video was about the difficulty to be an inventor in the US and the high cost of patent filing. The average cost of a US patent with patent attorney fees is around $15,000. This alone already greatly limits who can protect its intellectual property and who simply cannot afford it. Have you never wondered what happened to some of those renewable energy inventors? You really think there is no invention out there? 
Well, the United States alone spends about $37 billion on fossil fuel subsidies every year. So, you take a guess, you do the math. Where are they? Somebody just filed a patent for low cost renewable energy. Go give them a visit and take care of it. Is this Mr. Marcus? This is the U.S. Patent Office. And that's why we need a decentralized system that is not governed by one entity. We need a platform where you can upload your documents, patent searches are done by AIs, and everything gets stored on the blockchain. Everything is locked with a timestamp and never can be deleted regardless if it's a good or a bad idea. No censorship by the patent office. Personally, I think this would be a great use case for blockchain technology. I myself have programmed an ICO, initial coin offering for our own blockchain company, Verde350, but I think this needs a little bit more development and actually requires a team. This definitely goes beyond my programming skills. So if you are a blockchain developer and you want to start a decentralized patent filing system, contact me and we built this. Or do it yourself. If you have the skills and the team, more power to you. There were quite a few comments where people said, I'm sure you're being paid by the power companies to build this generator just to show that it's not possible. Well, I wish somebody was paying me, but I can assure you that I haven't made a single penny with my YouTube channel yet. <laughs> I did, however, just reach 2,000 subscribers. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you very much for all the new subscribers. I appreciate that. I built this generator purely to see if there's any truth to the videos my friends sent me. Usually I only make home improvement videos, but the generator video got way more views than any of my other videos, so maybe I need to rethink my strategy. <laughs> but I'm no scientist, and I certainly don't want to waste my whole life searching for free energy. Now I know. But I do believe that there is a need to find sustainable energy solutions. Because as you all know, switching to electric cars isn't really solving the climate problem. We also need the infrastructure and sustainable energy solutions to charge all these cars. As I mentioned in the first video, we started a blockchain company that focuses on green energy solutions and carbon reduction with our first goal to develop green sustainable crypto mining. So if you do want to support us, Perhaps invest a small amount, buy some Verde 350 tokens. For no dog coin, or moon coin, or whatever else is out there promising you to strike gold. So if you're looking to become rich overnight, we're not the right blockchain company for you. you keep looking elsewhere. <laughs> we are growing slow, but steady, and we are a blockchain company with an actual cause. As the father of two children myself, I do believe we owe our children to come up with solutions that can make a difference. But at the very least, come up with more sustainable ways to produce energy. It is doable. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.